Hey guys, uh, we made the trip over to Joplin, Missouri today to Speed Dealer Performance uh, here with Frank. Yep. We're going to talk about this FXR today. All right, man, before we jump into your bike, uh, let's kind of get into you, man. Like, kind of, how'd you get your start into all the machining and performance stuff you do in motorcycles and then eventually, like, speed dealer performance? Um, I started out in dirt bikes when I was a kid, probably 10 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, YZs, uh, Hodakas, and stuff like that. I've been riding dirt bikes for my whole life. Later on in life, I got into bigger bikes, Harleys, and stuff like that. Became a machinist at a fluke, uh, went to high school guidance counselor. I'm going to become a mechanic. The mm -hmm. mechanic shop was full. And then my destiny was set in that guidance counselor shop. The machine shop's open. Had no idea what it was. Okay. Got into it and had a God-given ability to be a machinist. And that's where I am today. Yeah, there's a walking in was pretty cool. All those, like, uh, machines over there. It was pretty Yeah, started pretty awesome. out in my garage and uh, bought these two machines with my first piece of equipment. And from there, bought my first CNC. And now I've got quite a few. And got a pretty good crew work for me and we're into motorcycles and that's what we do too build bikes and build part four bikes so, there you go yeah so how did speed dealer performance come about like when did that get started oh about uh, like with everybody else about 2005 when the big chopper deal come you know uh -huh. jesse james and all the yep. biker build offs and stuff so uh, there was a uh, niche stuff there and i want to do my own choppers and build my own kind of like, custom parts and made two or three and all of a sudden I said, well, I'll just build 10 and see yeah. if I can sell them and start a little eBay store and it's grown from there. We got about 600 different parts we make for custom Harleys now. Okay. From gas caps to pegs, forward controls, uh, slave cylinders for hydraulic assist and everything in between, Triumphs. Yeah, and all. Was, uh, yeah, y'all don't, don't just do Harleys, y'all have all kinds of bikes. I know you were showing us the, did it start at the Thruxton? It like started at Thruxton. Thruxton early, that was, I'll have to throw a photo in that. That was, yeah. bike is pretty awesome. So y'all deal with a lot of different bikes, not just Harleys, Just correct? not Harleys, yeah. We do uh, a lot of chopper stuff, which is Harley-based. Yeah, but yeah. I make a real cool little all-billet LED light Okay. that uh, goes for choppers. It's got like 2100 Lumina. Okay. And it's uh, bright as hell and uh, running on your little Evo chopper. And it's like a off-road light for a chopper. And it's pretty cool. So there you we, go. We, we, we got a pretty good variety of stuff for the Harley-based, whether it's a... FXR, a touring bike, or a hardtail chopper. Okay, nice. Mostly choppers. That's how we got into the chopper deal, like everyone else. Cool. All right, man, let's get into uh, this FXR. So yeah. before we get in, like, the detail and all those, all the parts, I know because you made a ton of custom yeah, parts for this, which is really cool. Bike. But, like, kind of high level, like, what was your vision when you started this bike? Kind of what, what were you going for to get to this end product? That kind of deal. I'm kind of a sports car fan, and then I was uh, wanted to do the leather stuff, and you know, kind of uh, influenced by that. But as I started building it, I wanted to build everything just super light, uh -huh. and that kind of got the whole thing into this monster. It is everything was just detailed, make it light as possible, get carbon fiber, drill out pegs, and stuff like that, and, and that's became the whole theme of the bike to make it as light as possible. Okay, but still some good engineering um, in it with aesthetics too. So okay, there's a yeah. lot of I was going to ask how much of the aesthetics were driven by like actually wanting it to look that way and how much was just driven by just trying to get it as stripped down and light as possible. Well, that's kind of a double sword with something like uh, a bike like this. You want to make it engineered to, to look, I mean, engineered to function good. But me being with my OCD, I want it to be aesthetically good mm -hmm. too. So engineered everything to be 
good, mm -hmm. but I wanted to look good too. You know, there's a lot of performance here, but the aesthetics part of it was, with any kind of motorcycle part, that's kind of double-edged sword that you always have to kind of do. I think you nailed it with like the carbon fiber and all the aluminum. Yeah. Um, I think I've said it probably a gazillion times. I'm, big, I'm a big fan of the simple and clean, and yeah. it definitely hits that. Yeah. Um, I guess let's start. Uh, well, you started as a turn in FXR. What year FXR? It's an 86 FXR. 86 F FXR. Yeah. Um, we threw an SNS 124, is that so correct? That's 124 SNS, 640 cams, makes about 128 horsepower, 133 foot pounds of torque. Super G carburetor with, uh, we got our own uh, speed dealer velocity stack okay. and the power valve on the bending of the upper end of the motor. And then uh, we built our custom header for that. Okay. Yeah. And then you also built custom motor mount as well, correct? Yeah, I didn't like the way the, the the FXR motor mount, the triangle type uh, situation. Um, it works, but it's not the perfect deal as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. So mm -hmm. I wanted a two points and to make it aesthetically good too. It's built out of 7075 and it's got uh, plastic bushings and stuff, okay. kind of like a, a race car or a, okay. a mini truck type deal. I got you. And is that probably a significant improvement in the vibration? Oh, yeah, it's quite a quite a difference and again the three-point deal it's you know tipsy turvy type deal but that thing is really a solid deal and um, even with the solid motor mounts in the back uh, it's got a 640 cam in it so it's a pretty rough and tumble motor but you can hardly see the handlebars move because of, I feel because the motor mount is okay. absorbing that and then I got another trick part I got a that bike shock okay up on the torque arm on mm -hmm. where the motor mount is in a absorbs a bunch of that vibration of the, of the motor. Cool. Yeah, I, yeah. that amount of power and a bike like this, like I've only ridden a few FXRs and I've ridden one with the SNS 113, my yeah. brothers, like I was talking about earlier. So I couldn't imagine just from riding that bike and yeah. this one's already way lighter. Yeah. Um, and that amount of power, that's just gotta be bonkers. Yeah, I was really surprised how light it got. It got down to 523 pounds with a half a tank of gas in it and you know, it's it's uh, I've just I've got a couple hundred miles on it now. It's mm -hmm. not totally broke in. I couldn't yeah. imagine when it's broke in. Yeah, it's like a street legal freaking dirt bike. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Cool. Yeah. Um, Baker drivetrain on there. Is that it's right? Six feet uh, Baker, and I got the neutral down drum in it. So there's okay. no neutral between first and second. You just keep down shifting. Just all the way down to neutral. All the way neutral, which is. It's, as anyone has had a Harley, that neutral is hard to find. Not a uh, nice deal. I recommend that to anybody that does Harley. I feel like that would be awesome. It'd, it'd probably take a while to get used to it, yeah. going in in a red light and making sure you're in first or when you're trying to go versus neutral. But then once it's, you're going, that would be money. It's real yeah. easy to feel. I thought it'd be the same thing. I've had a couple of bikes like this. Okay. But once you go in neutral, you feel the, you feel the bike roll. Oh, okay. You're, so not, you're, you're not engine braking. Okay. And so so once you hit that, you feel the bike like, oh, let okay. loose, and, that, you can, and then you can go back to the first one. So, you know, it's okay. really cool on a stop line, especially you know, long stop lights. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I wouldn't even, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't engine brake as, as bad. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, custom exhaust, right? Yep. We built the exhaust here. It's a, a step-up exhaust, which means it goes from a smaller pipe to a bigger pipe into a, a big collector. I like the short type deals. I wanted that for the aesthetics of the bike too. It's still engineered to perform, mm -hmm. but I wanted it short just to go with the whole theme of the bike. Yeah, it, yeah, it all works together perfect, perfectly. Yeah. Um, all right, let's jump up to the front. I know yeah. we got it. We got it inverted up here yeah. with the uh, dual disc and Brembo's, but yeah. um, kind of talk a little bit about that inverted. That's not just. Yeah, that's not your typical deal. That's uh, I built the trees myself and put a KTM legs on it with the with with the KTM they come with a bill of aluminum Brembo calipers mm -hmm. from the factory. Yeah, yeah. So it was really cool when I seen that what I wanted to this bike to weigh and the bike that it came off, the KTM 1290, they weigh about 520 pounds and this bike ended up weighing 523. So I, I got that uh, off a new bike and there's a guy down in Dallas that takes new bikes and strips them down. Okay. So it's not like a wreck bike or anything yeah, yeah. like that. I did, did all the math on the uh, triple trees and come up with four and three eighths on the uh, trail. Okay, okay. For good handling on okay. high speed and low speed. Yeah. So it's a KTM legs with Brembo billet calipers and then on the trees, I put a GPR stabilizer on it too. Okay, gotcha. So you can actually, on the fly, tighten your steering up or loosen your steering however you feel. I mean, once you 
it goes from zero to 20, and 20 you can't even hardly turn yeah. the bike. So it's, okay. it's, it's really stable at high speeds. And I guess I know I had a, I had a 1290 Super Adventure for a bit, and those front forks, they were completely like adjustable. And oh, I put, it's, it's, still got all the adjustability and everything. Yeah, there's the total, you know, I think the WP okay. legs from yeah, New yeah. Zealand. Yep, yep. Yeah, they're really big. I mean, KTM's won the Paris to the car. Yeah, point me twenty times, so they know suspension. Yeah, know. oh, one hundred percent. Mine, mine, performance wise was just like yeah, out of the park. Um, yeah. It rides really smooth, and I narrowed it up too, so it's got the same width as a narrow glide Harley. Okay, so it's not real wide either. Cause okay, that's a Dyna front fender, a carbon fiber fender that uh, just it has no uh, fender spaces or anything. And okay, I, and I had to build my own custom I was gonna, yeah. fender braces too. That was probably one of the hardest things of all the things on this bike those fender braces were probably the hardest to build okay um and then you got you said it was custom wheels correct I, yeah well, we built the wheels here speed dealer they're a, a forged wheel and uh, i was always a big bmx kid yeah, you know, yeah. mongoose and stuff so yeah. that's a mongoose type okay design yeah yeah those wheels. that yeah. makes sense and then you got uh kind of matching rotors right yeah the the rotors was kind of a cool story i called Lindell, which is I think is the best brakes in the market, I called Paul and uh, told him what I was doing and I need some black, they call those hats, that part of the, okay, of yeah. the bike. And he said, uh, can I buy some blanks? He said, yeah, what are you doing? I told him what I was doing. He said, yeah, I got, got another deal for it too. And he got, he only built nine of these little nine inch rear rotors and he gave me a blank on that. So I cut the rotors, the sprocket, the rotor hats, uh -huh. the same pattern as my wheels. Nice. So they got the moto, the mag type uh, pattern on the rotor this, and the sprocket. Oh, cool. Yeah, it all flows together. Cool. Uh, and then we have this. I thought initially before I got here that this was like just a typical like clamshell. Yeah. But this is like a custom fairing, right? The custom fairing that that all comes from uh, Kurt Taylor out of Custom Design Studio out in Northern California. He's been he's been around a little bit. He's a super solid guy. Him and his wife Lisa. Mm -hmm. They got a real cool bike shop up there, and this is all. Uh, True carbon fiber, I think it's Italian motorsports or Italian performance, uh, super lightweight, good quality, and uh, just a super cool guy to deal with. And uh, you just, you know, you got it's, it's good stuff. Fender fairing, side covers, and then this, the rear fender, is that yeah. correct? Yeah, okay. and, and the rear fender was off a of bagger and it was real long. <clears throat> so I cut it short and made a custom license plate bracket out of the scrap piece of the carbon okay. fiber. Okay, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, which cool. nice. ended up weighing less than the license plate itself. Cool. And then you've got your, this is like three, four inch risers, is that right? Uh, there's, yeah, four inch risers. Four inch risers, okay. Yeah, I built those risers myself to, it's got a curve in it to, to miss the GPA, GPR okay, yeah. stabilizer. And then I built my own carbon fiber uh, dash for motor gadget mm -hmm. uh, tack and all the technology in motor gadget. It's got a whole motor gadget wiring harness on it. Okay, nice. Yeah. Cool, and then this was a, an old FXR tank you modified, correct? Yeah, it was a pretty rough tank. I think it was built in the 80s or something like that, a real narrow tunnel, and <clears throat> it was really rough. So I had to uh, cut the tunnel out, and then I got my own splashing hammers and sheet metal stuff, so I uh, cleaned it all up and smoothed it all out. Okay. And uh, it was quite a bit of work, but it came out pretty neat. Yeah, it looks good. Like yeah. like I said, that aluminum with like the carbon fiber touches and everything. Yeah. Um, all right, let's jump to the rear. Um, yeah. Got the swing arm? Yeah, yeah. the swing arm is uh, tracks, track swing arm. Okay. And Olean shocks. Uh, okay. And then I had to build a fender brace to support anyone that sits on the back, whether it be my wife or my mm -hmm. boy. And then the seats uh, by James Carter Seats out of okay. Cave Springs, Arkansas. Okay. He, uh, he's got his own secret formula for some kind of progressive, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. Keebler Elves or something, like the foam <laughs> form or something. Yeah. And he built my grips too. They're yeah, I like how the grips. Yeah. We'll make sure to put it on a video, but like how your grips match like the top of your seat. Yeah. Um, it's nice because like it's all like aluminum and carbon fiber. And then the only color touches you have are, I guess, your red down there and stabilizer, but then yeah. top of the seat and yeah. your grips. And, and I guess the yellow headlight. Yeah. yeah, and James was really adamant about the red, and and, and I didn't know if it was going to work or not, but I trusted yeah. him and his stuff. And it, it's it's pretty masculine looking. I was really, really, really happy the way the seat came mm -hmm. out. Always top quality craftsmanship, but he's really good for his colors and stuff too. Cool. And then we have those are 14s for Olin's. Yeah. Okay. 14 cool. and 8. And yeah. we had a 
we got to cover cover that yellow. Up, yeah, right? <laughs> I didn't like the yellow, you know. So I built my own little uh, covers. It's got a pretty cool deal. There's no bolts on this. Mm -hmm. I put a little O-ring in there where I ordered from the master car. Okay. And then I got the right size for it. So it once it pops on, it covers the yellow only, so it doesn't do anything for the performance and. And I was going to change these the other day, but I can't get them off. I mean, that, <laughs> so now they're on it, there. It that works really on. well. That, nice. little, that little device that holds it on. Cool. Uh, I guess jumping the B side, we have a chain kit up back there, right? What, yeah. You know what sprocket size is? I don't know what sprocket size okay. is. I, get the, I don't really know. Off the top yeah. of your head. And then we yeah. have, uh, I guess, the exposed belt back there. It's pretty yeah, nice it's got a, too. Yeah, it's got a BDL uh, two inch open drive, and I built my own. Uh, Foot guard in that, and then I had to build my own shifter mechanism too, okay. because they don't they don't sell that, and all this is all custom. Okay. So I had to make my own little stainless steel housing with Belleville washers and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all really super solid, and I can show you on that. It's uh, it's all engineered by me. It's mm -hmm. all roller bearings and stuff okay. like that. So that was kind of another custom part that okay. evolved from all this build. That was uh, I guess one of the really impressive parts for me. Is I feel like you have a ton of custom parts that you've made yourself specifically for this. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned you use these machines back here for yes. a lot of this, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was trying to do everything I could to prove to people you still can build custom bikes. I mean, there's some capital investment in a couple of small deals. It's not like my CNC's or nothing like that. I, I built my wheels on my CNC's, but the most of it, like my motor mounts uh, and all my, my uh, header mounts and all that stuff is all Bridgeport and manual stuff in it. Elaric welder, we welded it here. And I did all the pounding and stuff on pretty simple grizzly tool tools. I just wanted to make a point that there you can still do it in a little garage shop. Yeah. That's yeah, this is badass. Like yeah. uh I'm a huge FXR fan and yeah. I think prior to running across your bike when you finished it for Sturge a few weeks yeah. ago, my yeah. older brother's FXR was like hands down my favorite. But yeah. now I think this one is definitely like we're out there with it in terms yeah. of my book. I appreciate um, that. And there was yeah. I had pretty pretty good success at Sturgis. I was really surprised. You know, there's a couple of really big names in FXR. Uh, Bare Knuckle Performance up here in mm -hmm. northern Missouri. He picked me for his favorite FXR, oh, which is a real compliment because he's yeah. basically an FXR shop. You yeah, know, and he's yeah. an FXR uh, guru or you know legend. Afar. He he's just a really cool guy. He's a he's a big man. I'd rather freaking eat with him than fight with him. <laughs> sure, yeah, he's a go. big guy. Cool, man. Well, you got anything? Uh, I know I kind of glossed through everything really quickly, and you have you have tons of little things on here. Is there anything mm -hmm. specific you want to part out, uh, point out, especially any of y'all's parts kind of deal? Yeah, we. Uh, this is our uh, uh, hydraulic assist uh, clutch activator. Okay. That we, that's a speed dealer part, and again, the velocity stack is a speed dealer part. And I'm running speed dealer pegs. Okay. And speed dealer uh, grips. And okay. We make a new quick throttle housing here okay. too. It's all exposed, but it's kind of like the old drag racing deal. Okay. So it's real quick. I mean, that was full throttle. Oh, okay. Really, oh, wow. It, yeah. Which makes it even harder to ride, this 124 with yeah, that's 500 pounds. Yeah, not a lot of play for that No, much you power. go like yeah. that and the front wheel's coming up. Uh, yeah, so I'd imagine so. get used to that. Sweet, man. Yep. This thing is uh, this thing amazing. Thanks. So for everybody out there, if they want to get, get in contact with you guys for any of your parts or Anything like that? What's the best way to reach you guys? Uh, usually through Instagram, Speed Dealer Performance or Speed Dealer Customs. You know, we've kind of okay. converted over to that. But uh, I'm usually on there, or you can call the shop and okay. uh, talk to Kim or Steph, and uh, they usually answer the phones. And the, those girls are pretty technical and get your stuff out. And any questions they can't answer, they'll come to me. But they're pretty good at answering most of the technical questions. Cool, man. Yep. Um, I appreciate it a ton. I'll drop all that info down there okay. and um thanks thank you oh wow that's like crazy now here's the here's the okay. deal about that what are you doing okay. is uh is the harley is a piston like this okay the slave cylinder and they haven't changed that for 50 years okay the ktm mm -hmm. the cotties they call this a radial pull okay so you got all the leverage coming in there like this uh, okay so, so that's what makes it really significant yeah because yeah. that is well, you know, it's like that is crazy. Your Harley, mm -hmm. it's so easy on that. Uh, yeah. And it was 164. You had to have that. But uh, these hand controls, again, this, this old technology from Ducati, these things were from 2005 to 2008 Ducati. It's really super cool. Yeah. You can see the logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. 
but as far as the technology, that's where Harley's going to pick their game up you know, to, to go to something like this. Yeah, I agree. Hopefully, that's the rumor is like a lot of that, that technology in there is like coming to like a new bag and everything like yeah, that. So, yeah, 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 I guess you have the new Sportster, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm going to be 100% there. I'm putting there. those hand controls on my uh, street bike that too. Is, on my performance bagger. That's crazy easy. Yeah, that way, yeah. that right there would get me in trouble. Yeah, well, that's, that's what, you know, it's, it's just kind of hard to get used to. So, do you do, a lot, do, you do that on a lot of your bikes where you have like a smaller turn? Okay, yeah. so it's probably a little more of a... Yeah, it's actually bigger just from the center line of your grip up to here on Harley, it's way down there. Yeah. So it's like a big steering wheel on the car. Okay, you yeah. move this, you just barely move mm -hmm. from the center line. Yeah. 